We're going to be tying a low water comet um, for Chinooks, uh, starting out with the C14S number two glow bug hook. <clears throat> now it seems like kind of an odd choice, but I like the short shank. I find that if you hook a fish with this, it's coming to the bank, but also you tend to foul hook fish less. So when you have a bunch of fish in a small hole, a little bit smaller gap, crawling the fly through there, they tend to be a bit spookier too. Uh, so sometimes that smaller pattern helps, you know, trigger the bite. I'm using uh, 6 aught fluorescent orange uni thread. I'm going to start by laying a foundation of thread down the whole hook shank in typical fashion. I'm going to take my thread back up to the eye. <clears throat> I'm going to tie in some gold medium bead chain eyes. Then I'm going to take my thread clear on back again to just past the barb. I've got a black calf tail here. I'm going to take out a small gather. It, it, this particular fly, again, because it's going to be a low water, low clear water fly, I tend to tie them relatively sparse. And I, you know, some people will be like, well, how, how can the fish see it? But they can see the fly plenty well. I'm going to have the tail extend off the body about an inch. I'm going to trim my uh, tag ends of the calf tail. And I'm going to tie that in down the whole shank basically allowing just a little bit of space about the tip of a scissors behind the eyes so that I can hackle. On this one I'm going to also take the tail and pull up and kind of parachute wrap that. I'm going around the base again. This is preventing uh, that tail from flip flopping over on you and fouling. A fouled fly is not going to get bit. Now I'm going to tie in a little bit of small Antron uh, hot orange chenille. This is going to make the body. What are you doing there? You're, you're getting the core? Yeah, I'll expose, I'll pull just a bit of the Antron fibers out of the way, expose the core, and that way when I tie it in I don't have as much bulk towards the back end of the, of the fly. Just homogenizing a little bit. I'm just going to wrap that chenille forward. It's about three wraps. And that's going to soak up water? A little tiny bit, yep. Yep, add just a bit of color. Um, again, because it's Antron, you know, you're going to have light come in and have the, the fly actually light up a little tiny bit. Um, and I, you know, I think that, that makes a big difference. It's, it, it, again, it's, it's, it's prominent in the, in the, the fish's uh, view because it's lit up. But it's not overtly flashy. I think a lot of times with a lot of flash on the flies, fish will just react, you know, in a, in a poor manner, especially if you've got tons of pressure. And let's face it, if you're Chinook fishing in Oregon on, on the coast, you're going to be fishing with some friends. So um, I've got a black hen hackle here. Um, you could use, you know, pro-grade streamer feathers. There's a lot of uh, choices out there. Even like the wider feathers and just your typical woolly bugger marabou will do. Again, we don't need a lot here. We're trying to tie a relatively uh, sparse fly, so not a lot of hackle. Webby is important, but you don't need a whole bunch of it. I'm going to grab my stem. <clears throat> I'm just going to make a couple wraps. Trim off my excess feather. Just kind of slick all those plumes back. A couple of wraps to confine them. And that, again, that real classic wet fly look. Orange versus Sartreuse, or you tie this fly in a variety of I, colors. The two, my two primary low water uh, colors are going to be. Uh, chartreuse and orange. 
I prefer chartreuse in the morning and I prefer orange in the afternoon. And again, I think it has something to do with the way the light enters the water. They seem to find orange ones better, green ones better in the morning and orange ones better in the afternoon. So there's a low water antron comet, great low water Chinook fly.